Hey, let's take a look at the Pharaoh cell. I have taken out the RGB LEDs and I've added uh, uh, very intense uh, white light LEDs in here. So there are a lot more. Before I had seven. Right now I, I haven't counted. Uh, you know, two, four, six, eight. About four times as many uh, lights, except these are bright white LEDs. Now all I've done is actually taken a piece of. Uh, of uh, black uh, cardboard to tape the back of it to add contrast. Since we're talking about fields, you know, this would be like putting a lens cap on your lens, but in this case, since we're talking about fields and fields penetrate everything, then all this does is add contrast and also keeps the metal magnet from banging against the back of this rather expensive handmade lens. So, no further ado, let's take a quick look at uh, this professional ferro cell. I don't know how I have the magnet turned around. Okay, I've got it against one pole. Here you can see the hypertrochoidal formation more completely. Now, the more lights I add, the more complete. So, well, it's a hypertrochoid. It's a spirograph-like pattern. Now, if you're able to look at this on its side, I can bring it on its side here. Make sure I can get it into focus. Right now, I'm using a manual focus as ice lens, but let me rotate it around. Some have got some light leak down here. Let me get it further down here. Let me see if I can focus a little bit. There we go. Bring it into focus here. You see as I pan it around, you can see the thrill. It's a little like a little black hole, right? Using a one inch uh, cube, a neodymium iron boron uh, N55 gauss. I keep getting it out of focus. Sorry about that. There we go. And let's bring it along the dielectric inertial plane. Remember, this is just one less than one micron thin Get into focus. There we go. Less than one micron thin of ferrofluid. Here we see either quote unquote pole on either side of the ferro cell. And here you can see the actual depth. You really can't see it unless you actually have it in your hand. You can kind of see it. But let's bring it into focus. See, even with the white light uh, LG, RGB, LGG, RGB, uh, well, they're, well, <laughs> We still have white light here, but we're not using RGB LED. Sorry, I had a brain fright there. Um, but it doesn't matter that I'm not using the red, green, blue LEDs. I can still see, as you can see here, I've got red shift over here and blue shift over here. I told you. Bring it over here. i got the blue shift and red shift. But naturally, even looking at the magnet like this, I can actually see that I have red shift over here and blue shift over here sitting in the center of the ferro cell. Therefore... Let me get my glasses off. Let me get back into focus. There we go. Redshift over here, blue shift over here, so I know this is the south pole of the magnet, and this is the north pole. It's kind of much harder to see using the white light LEDs, especially with my glasses off, and using uh, the white light LEDs. This is exactly what my discovery proved to be. Let me get things back into focus here. Let me focus the Zeiss lens. There we go. There's the hypertrochoid. Um, what is happening is, is that each individual uh, array of light that's being shot out of these white light LEDs is uh, being slingshotted in a curved linear fashion around the reciprocating divergent centrifugal magnetic field and entering in at the convergent centripetal field. That's why the center of this looks black. Just like a black hole, quote unquote, for the sake of analogy and your comprehension, the light right at the center here of the magnet, the z-axis radial dielectric which makes up the coaxial circuit of light is being sucked in right in the center of the magnet. That's why it is black right at the center, but white along the centrifugal edge. My formula is correct. I discovered, I didn't discover, I mean I uh, found out about this ferro cell invention after the second edition of my book and the formula that I published for how and uh, the way that magnetism must exist. And uh, So I'm the first earthling anyway uh, to ever discover what props up 100% of the visible universe. I've got the formula for it and the complete logical uh, elaboration, a denotation of what it is, reciprocating processional hyperboloid that can only extrapolate itself out in field pressure mediation is a hypertrochoidal pattern. 
And this is exactly what you see. I actually have three formulas in a book, in, in my book, Uncovering the Pissing Secrets of Magnetism. And the book is free, by the way. Um, let me know if you need the download link for it. But this is a real-time view of magnetism affecting the coaxial emission of light transmission. You actually uh, are seeing the vortex, the hypertrochoidal vortex of light as it is being diverged and converged, centrifugal and centripetal, underneath. Let me get a little better focus here. There we go. Now, let's uh, turn on the flashlight because I can't see without my glasses on. Well, I can't see in the dark anyway. I, I can't even find the flashlight to turn the flashlight on. Let's move this one out. Let's show you something else kind of cool. You might not be able to see it, but it's there. You'll be able to see it barely. If you had this in your hands and you had a ferro cell, you would really see it. But let's take a close look here. And uh, let me get in focus. Let me erase this kind of like a spirograph pattern. Okay? And bring it down right in the center. You'll notice in the center what we have, this is a ring magnet is the formation. We also have the hypertrochoid outside of the outer edge of the ring magnet, but since it's a ring magnet and the center is hollow, you gotta wait a second for it to form. And if you're able to see this in person and you're able to get down on it to take a close, a shallow look at it, you'll see right here in the center you would actually see a genuine sphere. A sphere, an actual field projective ball with incredible depth because it is the center of a ring magnet. The field on a normal magnet is also reciprocating from one end to the other, which it is doing on this ring magnet also, but since there's a giant hole in the middle, i.e. a ring magnet, it is also reciprocating as field pressure mediation necessitatively dictates through the center to the other side, centrifugally divergent and centripetally convergent, and what it does is it creates a... Uh, a, uh, it would close down. It would able to collapse itself if possible. That's why if you take any magnet, you break it into little pieces, it'll eventually form a ball. A magnet uh, deplores uh, a spatial deviation. That's why if you were to take this magnet and hit it with a hammer underneath the cloth, and you were open up the cloth, you would see a tiny little jagged ball of magnetic pieces. It would always form a sphere, just as the Earth forms a sphere, and the Sun or any other large body will form a sphere. That's because gravity and magnetic acceleration are one and the same thing. There's no such thing as gravity. That which we call magnetic attraction or, or magnetic uh, acceleration, which is actually uh, a dielectric uh, convergence. It is, uh, it is dielectric acceleration is uh, one and the same thing. Gravity and dielectric acceleration, i.e. what you call gra magnetic attraction, are one and the same thing. They are not different. There is no such thing as an autonomous field entity that we know as gravity. It is Gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. It is dielectric voidance, or what we incorrectly, uh, uninvolved, unevolved humans refer to as magnetic attraction. This is irrefutable. It is absolutely irrefutable. Mother Nature is not a cross-eyed crack whore. Things are far, far simpler. Field unification is extremely, extremely simplex. It is not simple, but it is simplex. We have uh, dielectricity, the loss of that inertia, and necessitates divergent and convergent reciprocation, that which we know as magnetism. The hybrid of that is, of course, electricity. Q and Planck electrification. Phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification, that which we know as electricity. Gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. There's no autonomous field or force. Of course, it's not a force. Force is the loss of inertia. It is dielectric acceleration. So we only have two things in the hybrids of those two things, electricity and gravity. It is only the, the fact that humans are as yet unevolved to comprehend the simplex nature of fields and uh, divergent uh, loss of inertia that we uh, think that uh, there is a dielectricity or electrostatics and magnetism and electricity and gravity. These four things we're trying to unify when of course they're always unified ultimately and fundamentally. There were never four different autonomous things. Pathetic humans have been scratching their heads now for the past hundred plus years trying to meld these four fields into one thing, one unified field, but they've always been unified as only due to pathetic human ignorance and the unevolved nature of humanity that uh, we have not yet come to this understanding yet.
Part of this understanding was made by Tesla, and part of it was made by Walter Russell, and a very, very few others, but none of them ever stitched the whole pattern together. But I have. Whether you believe me or not, I don't really care. My book is free. I'm not selling anything, so... But here's the proof. My formula is proof. This is a feral cell. You can get it off feralcell.us. No, I make no money off of it. It's not my invention. But I really wish you could see this uh, in your hands. It is uh, singularly unique. And uh, people that are very jaded in life, they see a feral cell. And their eyes kind of light up like a, children on, a child on Christmas Day because they're seeing something for the first time that they've never seen before. If you actually let it sit there long enough, the ferro fluid inside starts to pool a little bit. And so you got to keep it moving around at least a little bit. You wouldn't want to ever set the magnet there overnight. That would be a faux pas. In which case you would have to massage it out using the magnet because the ferro fluid, even though there's very, 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 very little in there, starts to pool wherever the magnet is sitting. Let's move that magnet out of the way and show you the miraculous one again. By the way, these are two magnets together. Okay. But once they're together, the dielectric inertial plane, you can't understand uh, field incommensurability, but once we put the two together, the dielectric inertial plane immediately moves to the center. It is so hard, I'm so lucky to be a Greek translator to understand what incommensurability means. But let me turn the lights off again. Once we bring the two magnets together, stuck together, what we have is what looks like one long bar magnet, but really it's two magnets. But the dielectric inertial plane always self-centers itself as necess necessitatively. Let me bring this into focus a little better. There we go. Always comes together as it must. That's why you can take any magnet and cut it. If you're able to put it in a salami slicer, for example, which of course you can't do, and slice it a million billion times, like thin little slices, each little slice will have a quote-unquote north pole and a quote-unquote south pole and it will have in the very middle a dielectric inertial plane. This is field incommensurability, point non-specific incommensurability. Sounds incredibly complex, but it is divinely simple. There are certain Greek words that are untranslatable into English like prodos and tolma and ananke that define this incommensurability. But these ancient Greek words are untranslatable. <laughs> They really are. In um, the same way the word logos really is untranslatable. You could write an entire book about what the, lo what the term logos means, but you'll never really hit it smack on the head. Unless you spend countless years translating ancient Greek and reading the people like uh, Proclus, Plotinus, Numinus, Albinus, Demasius, Plato, Aristotle. <laughs> Stuff that does not make you money, does not get you rich, does not get you famous, does not get you... You know what I'm about to say next. Anyway, thanks for watching and taking a look at this fabulous invention. Now, so, so very simple. Simplicity is divinity. Simplicity is divinity. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this video and drop me a buck or two, go tell me to jump off a cliff. But you saw it here first. And uh, I'm so glad to show you stuff like this. Okay? Um, and I am so proud, even if I croak next month from a heart attack, to be the first earthling to figure out what magnetism is and uh, specifically I have the formula for it, I have the full denotation of what it is, how it is, why it is, as well as what a magnet is and how a magnet works. People think, oh magnets are in everything, we know how magnetism works. No we didn't. No we didn't. And this isn't my contention. You could go on any website and we'll say, ask the question, well how does magnetism work? They have no idea. I'm the first person in the world to figure it out. Yes, indeedy, I am. Am I proud of that fact? Yes, I am. Do you think that's boasting? I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. Ancient saying, wisdom is its own reward. Do you think that is boastful or not? That's pertaining to my discovery in the book. The book is free, by the way. I'm not selling anything. But wisdom is its own reward. So, before I croak, whenever I croak, heart attack, run over by a truck, bitten by a dog, I, I will have uh, made this discovery and be the first person to have done so. Thanks for watching. Bye.